President Biden wants to uh, decarbonize the American power grid by 2035. That's 100% clean energy. And that's going to be quite a revolution for the American power electrical system. And he talks about uh, grid modernization. So what does that exactly mean? Well, we're going to get an answer from Hudson Gilmer, who is the CEO of Line Vision in the Boston, based in the Boston area. So welcome to the interview, Hudson. Thank you so much. Uh, a pleasure to be here, Markham. And Look, great to let's, share the Canadian connection. Well, let's start at the, the broadest level. Can you tell us what grid modernization means in the American context? Sure, happy to. Um, you know, so I'm 53 years old. And you know, in this time, I've seen tremendous technological advance in computers and telecommunication in cars, electric vehicles. But what's amazing is when, when we look at how the grid is actually operated, it hasn't changed fundamentally in nearly 100 years. Um, and so when we talk about grid modernization, it's really taking advanced sensor technology, advanced analytics and AI and applying that to make our grid, make the backbone of our electric system um, more efficient, more flexible, more resilient, and safer. Yeah, that's really important because uh, I uh, I read all the time and I do interviews with experts and they say, look, the utility of the future is going to be very different. It's not going to be vertically integrated. It's not going to be, it'll be more horizontal and flat. It'll look more like a web of grids than it than a, than a vertical model. And so, you, and it will be enabled and empowered by all of the things that you just talked about. Have I kind of got that right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you've seen that kind of deregulation in certainly in most parts of the US where generation has been separated from the wires business um, and, and we have competitive markets. Right, so I would imagine uh, that not all grids are created equal, that some are more modern than others. How much, uh, can you give us a bit of an insight into that? Um, no, in, in reality, I think most grids are still operated fundamentally very similarly to the way they were run, you know, 50 or, or 75 or 100 years ago. I think what's, what's changing now is we're really at this point of a transition to a, 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 a new, cleaner energy future or more electrified future. And, and that is prompting a real pressures um, and, and forcing change in the way grids are operated. Um, one of those is more and more renewables that are coming onto the grid. The second is just the increasing demand from electrifying loads like transportation, like buildings, like industry. Um, and then the third is climate risk. Um, the fact that, you know, as we saw in California and as we saw in Texas recently, um, you know, we can't take for granted the safety and the reliability of that grid. Um, we need it to be much more resilient. Now, I have heard it said uh, in, during the interviews that I've done that the grid modernization is really important to increasing the percentage of intermittent electricity generation provided by, you know, wind and solar, for example. Uh, could you explain that for us, if you don't mind? Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, if we look at some of the goals that have been set out, for example, by the Biden administration to say that by 2035, we want a zero net carbon grid, um, that is going to require, by some estimates, there was a study that uh, Jesse Jenkins of Princeton University recently put out saying that even by 2030, we're going to need to increase grid capacity by at least 60%. Um, and so one of the biggest obstacles to achieving that energy transition is um, unlocking more capacity on existing lines, either by building new lines or by using these new technologies. And uh, our utilities, and I guess in the case of uh, many uh, jurisdictions in the U.S., independent system operators, uh, are they ahead of the curve on this or are they playing catch up? Um, it, it's, it's difficult to generalize. Um, you know, we're fortunate. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm, I'm uh, heading up a company called Line Vision, which is one of the providers of um, advanced 
transmission technologies. Um, we, we provide a dynamic line rating solution. And we're, we're fortunate to have a number of utilities such as National Grid, such as Excel, such as Dominion, who are, are really embracing these technologies um, to solve important problems that they face. Um, they know they need to integrate more renewables onto their grid in a more cost-effective and flexible way. Um, they know that they have a lot of aging lines and they need a better technology to monitor the condition of those lines. But I think there's a whole spectrum. You know, you look at the 50 states and, and the several hundred utilities in the U.S. and, and similarly in Canada, and, and you've got you know, some that are, are earlier adopters um, and, and some that are, 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 are still, you know, reluctant to, to adopt new technology. Now, one of the drivers of change in the utility industry is going to come from customers. Uh, customers want more services. They want to self-generate. They actually want to sell into and out of the, the, the market. Uh, so what, how important is pressure from customers to modernizing the grid? I mean, I think customers are demanding clean energy. So that, that is certainly pushing utilities in this direction. Um, and, and I think customers in some cases are doing things like installing, you know, they're, they're uh, reacting to things like the power shutoffs in California and what happened recently in Texas and, and buying backup generators or battery systems. Um, but, but I think, you know, we're, we're strong believers in the power of the grid as an instrument for energy equity, frankly, um, because what, what it does, it's, it's frankly one of the most impressive engineering uh, accomplishments of, of the 20th century. Um, and it's, it's able to deliver the cheapest source of power to everyone, right? Whereas rooftop solar or battery systems uh, or, or, or even microgrids are really a luxury that's not available to, um, to, to everyone. Now, uh, Hudson, if you were looking out, say, uh, the next two to five years, what are some of the, the key developments that you see happening? So one of the things that we're very encouraged by is the amount of support we're seeing from the Biden administration in terms of accelerating the adoption of some of these technologies. Um, and so um, if you look, for example, at the, um, at the infrastructure bill um, that, that was announced several weeks ago, that includes $100 billion for grid modernization. That's, that's a major investment. And of course, it still has to get through Congress. Um, but we also see very positive uh, actions at the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, who is promoting the adoption of these grid enhancing technologies through a combination of revisiting the incentives that utilities are under, um, as well as uh, requirements to move away from very conservative uh, standards of how lines are rated and operated. Yeah, gotcha. So any final thoughts on this, uh, on grid modernization, uh, Hudson? Um, so really what we see is, you know, today we're, we're, there's, there's a mismatch between the increasingly variable and dynamic nature of generation, um, where we've moved away from static and dispatchable um, central power plants towards much more variable renewable sources. Um, uh, and and the the grid itself, the backbone of the grid, which is still very static. Um, and so the vision that we see is that these relatively low cost sensor and analytic technologies that are offered by Line Vision and, and others um, can make that grid a much more flexible resource, a much more efficient resource. Um, and also a safer resource that's able to detect anomalies like the risk of wildfires. So that's the grid of the future that we see. And, and we're very encouraged by all the support uh, that we're getting both from our customers and, and from the, the regulatory bodies to, to move in that direction. Hudson, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. My pleasure, thank you.